Hey everybody, thanks for checking out my latest video. Uh, please subscribe, comment, and like as it will help me get more views if you enjoy my content or find it informative. Um, so I just started on uh, getting serious on chess uh, September of last year. And uh, oh, by the way, I hope everybody had a happy new year and wish you good luck in 2023 and hopefully you had a nice holiday season. Uh, but anyway, you know, I, I fell down to 500s. Um, then started studying more and, and getting uh, getting into it more. And since I've climbed uh, up to the, then I climbed up to towards 900. Um, then I, I fell back down to 800, got real discouraged, started watching more videos and trying to figure out uh, some strat, some openers more. Anyway, I finally actually broke 900 today on January 3rd for the first time. Um, so that was satisfying. Uh, hopefully I'll be onto 1,000, 1,200, possibly 1,400. Although I do feel like the uh, I do feel like the competition is obviously going to increase up there, and people are going to know openers well, and probably multiple openers on both sides. Um, but uh, what I've been using are basically queens queens pawn um, on white formations, and then on the dark, I've been trying to generally use a Carol con type thing, depending. Um, but I wanted to show a few things. Uh, so the London system I've been implementing into uh, the white. I was doing just the queen's gambit. Um, with the with the queen palm, but the London system and it's been do, it's been working well at least at this 900 you know high 800s level. I just wanted to show four web uh, websites of experts that uh, are have really good videos about the London system. One of them is called Hanging Pawns. Uh, he has a whole thing here of multiple um, session multiple videos about each different kinds of setups and breaking up breaking down how to attack them. And he's actually likes to do it from the defensive perspective, but. Uh, from the dark, from the black perspective, but he got really good videos there. Uh, another one is a, someone I mentioned before, Alex Banzea. Um, I'm sorry, I believe he the, the first guy uh, hanging pawns is an IM uh, international master. Alex Banzea is an international master from Romania, I believe. He's got great videos on the London system and Carocon, um, a variety of things on those, um, in, in pretty in depth, uh, depending depending on what you're looking for. Another one I looked at also was uh, Chess Vibes. He has some cool videos where he uh, plays bots as well. Um, some of the bots on chess.com, which I know some of my videos about playing playing bots got some uh, high, high uh, views. Uh, but he's got one about 17 traps in the London system. That's pretty neat. Um, chess Vibes. And of course, Gotham Chess. Uh, who may You may have come here for me uh, dropping his name in my titles and trying to get uh, some views from I find him extremely entertaining. I wouldn't necessarily say I find his videos the most educational because he sort of runs through real fast things. And it's sort of hard in the time limit he does, while some of these other ones have a little more in-depth. But this is the game where I broke uh, 900. I'm sorry. This is the game where I basically got to 900. Then the next game I broke it, and they were both checkmates. This one was against a higher-ranked player from uh, Australia. Is that Australia or New Zealand? Australia. Um, so let me see if I can show this real quick. So Queen's Pawn again, when they meet it with that, you bring out for the for the uh, for the for the London system, um, you can either bring this bishop out to here to f4 or the knight to g3. But at least at the level I'm playing at, I find this better to bring this out because you want flexibility with this knight. Um, Responds with that. I did go ahead and bring out the knight uh, because here he left this. The 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 e4 and five squares are very important in controlling in the London system. Because he brought that up there, I said, well, let me bring this up so I can possibly bring it up to up to there if I need to, since he uh, hasn't blocked it yet. I mean, same thing could be here as well, but because um, there's different responses people have. Um, he brought that out. H h6, which is sometimes a sign they're going to fianchetto. I guess. So I, uh, then you close the, the right side of your pawn formation in the London on the dark. He brought out his knight. Uh, now the, the light bishop usually will go to e2 or e3. There are, might be some times you want to bring it out to e5 um, if he has something there. But uh, though generally that, that d3 square, I'm sorry, e2 or e3, E2 or D3, the, generally that D3 square seems to be better because it points over here if they castle on that side. And this guy's already opened up this pawn on that side. He opened up, he brought it, opened up the second pawn. And this immediately like started making me go, hmm, if he castles on that side, I'm going to have some nice attacks. Um, 
he probably shouldn't have done both of them uh, if he was looking to Fianchetto. Uh, so here, instead of closing the formation or bringing out the pawn, I went ahead and decided to uh, lock up the middle. Um, he has no threat on it right now, and uh, I decided that. Then I think I was deciding I could actually fight for that one. So I actually jumped ahead here a little bit from somewhat of the normal uh, pattern. Because look how undeveloped he is, too. He's just been moving pawns. So I brought that out. And, of course, when you have this, you have, you know, two defenders on it. Uh, you can get another one here. You can get another one. Um, uh, well, generally that's it. But then this one you can also get multiple defenders on with this knight, if need be, the queen, this pawn, this bishop. So he and Fia and Keto, the, the, uh, his dark bishop. So I, now I close the triangle, the pawn triangle, which is basically a, a big part of the London system as well, as well as bringing this bishop out of the, out of the triangle before it's formed. So he uh, castled in that corner, which again, you really don't want to move two pawns out of your corner uh, right away. Um, and again, this is a higher ranked player than I normally play, but you know, you generally don't want to move them both out, especially this one probably was a mistake considering uh, he wanted to feed cut, unless there's a system I'm not aware of. And maybe because he could slide that back there, but um, this this just gives you more room to attack, in my opinion. So then this this other knight, the B, the B knight's generally the final one uh, to decide, and it can either go here or here. And because I closed this off, I was already looking at this going into this and guarding this. I was going, well, he's only got one on that, so I can literally go boom and then take it with the bishop or the knight. Now, the reason to uh, sometimes to uh, put it here is if they bring this queen out for this, um, there's a couple ways you can trap the queen if they do this, if you have the knight on this square. Um, I believe it's like one of them is to do this, um, and there's another one like this. There's a couple different ways to do it um, where you can literally trap their queen if... They bring it out early and you have that knight on there, I believe. But you may want to look those up. Um, it's a sort of a, a pattern of moves you have to do, and it will trap the queen. And sometimes you end up with the knight down here forking the uh, queen and the rook, which is really good. It's like it, it goes here, here, and it say it's got the queen. And then the, if, and if this one's still trapped in there and that, then, you, I mean, both those can happen. Anyway, so in this, uh, but in this case, I close, I closed the triangle. And I, I didn't see him bringing the queen out because the queen's still uh, blocked in. So I went there. And this is one of the classic Londons. He brought out this pawn. So it looks like he's doing the same thing as he did on the uh, king side. He's doing on the queen side with the fianchetto. And he's just, he's very slow here. He's behind me because he's doing this two pawn move each time. So he's like a move behind me in development. Here I brought the queen out um, to here. I was debating this square or this square. Um, possibly that square, but sometimes I don't want my intentions to be known right away. Um, and I think I just decided that one would be okay. Now I can actually cast on either side and they're both guarded. None of the pawns have been uh, messed with yet. So he, he, he doubled up with that one. Um, I think he did that because let's say I could go here, but then he could recapture with the knight. Um, he, he doubled up, he moved that pawn to uh, I think to stop this one from coming in, or this one, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I, I, I think I saw it earlier, but now I don't. Now I didn't see it. Um, and it may have, yeah, it may have been to stop something with the knight. But anyway, so now I went ahead and brought this pawn up, another one to guard this square. You know, generally the F pawn and the C, you can still castle and they'd be fine with moving those forward once you have the rook out. So he did bring his up. Uh, light bishop so he's got them both on the diagonals but there's a big mess here um and there's not there's really nowhere for them to go right now this pawn is blocking this one which is key so he can't get do anything with this as long as the uh, d5 pawn can't move forward uh, and this one i have guarded with two uh pawns so he's not looking very good Okay, so here I brought out the uh, the knight over here, possibly looking to go to this and that. He brought his knight out over here, which is a mistake. Um, when you're uh, castled in the corner, 
and you have a light bishop facing you and a queen, this is the, basically the biggest protection against getting checkmated. The knight on f6, in this case for the dark. This is the biggest protection, and he moved it out. As soon as he did that, I'm like, hmm, I know there's some shenanigans I can do over there. Because when he moved it out, I mean, as soon as he exchanged it. So he said, I'm going to exchange for that. And I said, fine. It's what he looks like he's looking to do. Because he can't go here. So I went and decided to cast a long way because he might be coming down to do, to do something. And it might be open me up. I just decided to cast a long way. Uh, he's got nothing over here, really, on me. He took the bishop I took back. Again, might look up this pawn. This is what's great about these queen's pawn structures and particularly the London. You can get these great pawn things if the other player doesn't really know what they're doing. He brought out his knight, uh, you know, pro probably because of this. He was like, well, I don't want him taking my, my bishop, so I'm going to bring the knight out. It also attacks that, but that is protected. Um, but it's getting, you know, and then this this goes this can protect that way if need be. Or be a shield. Uh, here I decide I'm going to start moving these pawns forward and seeing what I can, if I can break these up, I've got an easy entry path. I move that one forward. If, if the queen takes it, the rook still protects it. And he might, you never know, he might miss that and do that. Sometimes people blunder. He decided to swap uh, the central knight, which is the one, this one, this knight is extremely powerful in, uh, in anything. When you, when you have an e5 knight guarded, it's hitting so many squares um, when you have one protected up there. And that's one of the things in the London. That's why they all talk about the E5 square, but also the E4, because the opponent will often jump into E4. I let him take it. Now, this was important here. I retook this way, because if I had retaken that way, then this pawn can move forward, and that frees up his light bishop. I mean, it's not that, that big a deal, but... By doing this, it locks this in, and he still can't do anything there, and it opens this up more. So I retook uh, with the uh, F pawn. He brought the rook over. He's still worried about protecting his bishops. He's just playing slow, basically, in my opinion, or passive, I guess you could say. Um, I went ahead and brought the knight in. I didn't, you know, just to threaten it. He withdrew the bishop back, so he really didn't want to uh, lose his bishop. That's a pretty poor move, in my opinion. Because it's really, where's it going to go? I mean. I brought the other pawn up. Now, the exact way you do these pawns, it's, you know, I may not have been the most exact here, but I'm starting sort of a pawn storm. I guess that is a pawn storm. Looking to break this open. He brought that, that pawn down. Now this move, this move I took, and this next move I took a minute on. So I, t I spent a full minute thinking about whether I should basically take this, move there, or move the queen here, or here, or even move the queen there. Um, and I decided, I decided I didn't want to take it because uh, that, that, and then I didn't really see a great move there. I mean, I, I actually that. I'm sorry, that is a good move there. If he took with that, that's like a checkmate, uh, almost a checkmate. But what I figured he would do is, um, what I figured he would do if I took was take with this, and this is scary on this side for me, and it's going to make it harder. Of course, I am castled on the other side. If I was castled. So anyway, I decided to do, uh, and so I have a plus six advantage here now um, based on that move. Even before then, I had a plus two. And no, uh, all that's been taken is I've taken both his uh, knights. He's taken a, a bishop and a knight. So I moved it in. I, I slid the, I slid the king over, um, sort of preparing this. I could also have slid it here. Anyway, I decided that like he took there. I moved the other pawn up. He moved the rook out of the way, possibly giving himself an escape square. I moved the pawn up. It's protected. Takes, I take. He can take. And I've got the queen. If I go if if I if I end up taking, then it's gonna boot his knight out of there. I mean his bishop. He took, I took. Uh, he may not have seen it, but either way, like that's just something else where sometimes people don't see long. Sometimes in, in my, around my level, especially, sometimes they don't see the long bishops, like if they're down here or the long queens. I mean, it happens to me. Anyway, 
he slid the queen out of the way, the king, excuse me. And I said, well, there's a free uh, pawn there for now because that pawn's blocking it. He moved the queen over, the king, excuse me, over there. I moved the rook down here. Um, I think I spent a little while on this move too. And I just said, well, I can threaten that. It can move there out of the way. It can't move there. It can move to the corner, it can move there. It sort of gums him in and he can move, bring that over to, to block it. Now already the already the king can't go here because of the pawns and it can't go here or here. So it's already down to like um, just a couple squares really. He brought the rook over to protect it. I pushed the pawn up one more saying, well, if he takes, I've got this. And I've also got this coming. He took, uh, that ends up being mate in three. The only way he could have saved himself here was uh, pushing this upon this direction, not capturing either F5 or F6, uh, or moving the queen back to here. It says he could have survived as well. But because he did that, I took with the bishop. I wasn't sure that, I, I knew it, I was getting close to a checkmate, but I wasn't 100% sure yet. Um, he withdrew it back. Now, I actually didn't see this at first, so I'm glad I saw it. The rook over, check. And uh, he, he moved into mate one with the queen. So that's one, two, three, four, that's five pieces, six pieces working together to mate. That's pretty cool. Really five. But um, anyway, so that's that one. I'm going to stop on that. Uh, there's another match where I actually jumped over 900, which is sort of another quick checkmate. But real quick on the analysis on this match, uh, neither of us made a blunder. So he got checkmated in a... Uh, 27 moves and didn't blunder, which is, I don't know, that's, I feel like that's unusual, but I had 84% accuracy and, and no blunders. So they just call that a queen's pawn opening. Um, they didn't, they wanted me here to, uh, I think, to castle. Uh, here they, here they wanted me to take this pawn. I believe, yeah, instead of sliding the, the king over. And uh, that's it. There weren't any other blunders or any of that. So, I mean, that was a really nice game by me, but it's un I feel like it's unusual that somebody has no blunders and got checkmated but uh, that quickly. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for checking out my latest video. And... Uh, if I beat if I beat either of the really hard bots, the really hard cat bot or the two grand master bots, which are really hard, uh, then I'll post those videos as well. Thanks. And uh, again, thanks for commenting, liking, subscribing. Appreciate it. Have a good one.